what is this great mystery we call life? What is its purpose? Why are we here? I think these questions have probably captivated and mystified humanity since the first humans showed up. Life is precious, it's miraculous, it's invisible, and yet it's everywhere. It's a creative force that courses through us and every being, every entity on this earth and perhaps beyond. I think it's interesting that as advanced as science has become and is becoming, we still cannot answer how or why life sparks. Life just is. We don't know how it sparks. We do know that we live on a planet of miraculous, magical, incredible, breathtaking, breath-giving beauty and diversity of that life force. Now, Unity has a body of teachings around 12 spiritual powers. These include things like faith, strength, release, imagination, and life is one of them, one of the 12 powers. And Charles Fillmore, one of Unity's founders, is the person who first came up with this concept of the 12 powers. And I wanna read what he had to say about the spiritual principle of life. He, quote, the first step in the realization of life is always to know that God is life, abundant, omnipresent, eternal, and the second step is to make positive connection with God life by declaring oneness with it. Well, for me, that begs the question, what the heck is God, right? I think the answer to that is very, very personal. It's based on what we study, our own spiritual maturation process, perhaps mystical experiences that we've had, our very personal journeys as spiritual beings inhabiting these human bodies right now in this part of our journey. Now, having been raised in a pretty dualistic and dogmatic religious tradition, I am highly skeptical of anybody who says they have a complete lock on what God is. And I am not about to do that here. But I will say that my own sense of, the, of this, my own concept has evolved tremendously over the last decade and it has evolved in ways that have really proved beneficial to me. So I'm just going to share my current understanding subject to change and evolve as I do. <laughs> I have had a few mystical experiences in my life where the best way I can describe it is I lose any sense of physical boundary and I, and I I connect in an all-encompassing way with the all that is. Now, one of the times that this happened was a few years ago and I was walking the Deschutes River Trail here in Bend, Oregon. It was a really bright day. I was in the forest. I could feel the power of those big old ponderosa pine trees. And I looked across the river at the, at the sunlight dancing on the water and I had that that sensation. I, I did not have physical boundary around my body. I was connected to the creation that was the all that is. These are very difficult concepts to put into, into words, um, but I will do my best. Uh, and in that moment, I had, I had this realization of God as, um, as the matrix, the matrix of all creation. And I could literally move my hand and shape and bend that matrix. That was like a tumbler clicking into place for me in my own pathway of moving beyond dualism. Now, I no longer view God as a distinct entity. But that doesn't mean God is impersonal. And this, is a, this, I think, is a paradox for those of us in non-dualistic traditions. If God is a force, a principle, a matrix, how do we relate to it? How do we, how do we talk to it? How do we pray to it? How do we praise? How do we reach out when we feel like we need some help? 
I have actually found the concept of God as this matrix to be anything but impersonal. I sit in awe and love of the incredible life force of which I am a part, and I know that I am personally recognized and personally supported. The universe is my benefactor. Say that. The universe is my benefactor. That's a powerful thing to dance with. When we truly remember the allness that we are a divine part of, we literally have the power of God, source, creator, pulling with us. I think that that is what Fillmore was referring to when he said, quote, making positive connection with God, with God life, by declaring oneness with it. At every single moment, the memory of God and our godness is shimmering across the vast horizons of our mind. We just have to open to it. The memory of our oneness with the Creator shimmers across the vastness of our minds all the time. So let me circle back the circle of life. <laughs> let me circle back around to the spiritual power of life. How can we as human beings having a, having a, or as spiritual beings having a human experience, how can we optimize the power of life itself? Life as a spiritual principle and power is way beyond biological, physical life. It is certainly way beyond just one human body. And unlike a body, the true faculty of life as a spiritual principle and power has no finite existence. One of my favorite books on Unity's 12 powers is um, Divine Audacity, written by Linda Martell Witsit. And I want to read just a paragraph that she has to say about this power of life. Life is of divine origin. Life is eternal and indestructible in keeping with the first law of thermodynamics. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It just flows. Although invisible and non-material, evidence of life can be sensed. Life exists in potential and requires intentionality, direction. Life is not a creation of the body. The body cannot create or destroy life. Life gives rise to the body. Invisible life takes shape in visible form. There's an animating power of life that is a forward, onward, upward impulse. It is a natural striving for more life. And that animating principle is everywhere evident in nature. It is in the process of a forest. A forest is not a thing, it is a process. A dead tree decays, becomes home, what they call a nursery tree. It becomes home to all kinds of new baby plants and fungi and then new trees. The, the, um, the turning of the seasons, the flow, the cycle of water as a drop gets flicked off a wave in the ocean, becomes mist, gets taken up into cloud, bumps into mountain, falls as rain, Gets, gets sipped from a pool or a glass, flows as urine, gets cleansed by rock and soil, runs into river, and travels to the ocean once again. Through the principle of life, we wield animating power. The opposite of spiritually realized life is not death, it's stagnation. The opposite of spiritually realized life isn't death, it is stagnation. It's the blockage of flow. A Course in Miracles teaches that the purpose of life is to obtain freedom, born free as we are, to obtain freedom and fully extend creation. And we do this through remembering what we truly are, taking dominion over our thinking and fully bringing into manifestation divine ideas. The Course says our purpose is to create even as God creates. That's powerful stuff. 
when we're not being intentional with our thoughts, we tend to miscreate, right? We see a lot of that going on right now, and I'm, you know, I've done a little bit of that myself, I would say. Life, in part, is about animating divine ideas and bringing limitless possibilities to extend creation. Now, another aspect, in addition to animation, there's another aspect of the life faculty as spiritual principle, and that's vitality. And vitality is the capacity to thrive, to wield life energy. And it, this is way beyond physical vitality. Think of people like Stephen Hawking. He was, had a debilitating disease, was wheelchair-bound his entire life, could barely move any part of his body. But that brilliant physicist mind was fully alive and vital. Are you playing small? Are you allowing your life energy to just sit here idle, not really activated? Are you focusing on limitations? Or are you choosing to really harness this power? You know, I used to, um, I used to take, I used to wrap my identity around. I, I had a pretty tough, I had some tough spells in my childhood for sure. And I used to really wrap my identity around being a survivor. I liked it when people called me that. No more, baby. That is not good enough. Just surviving is not good enough for me. I am a thriver. I want you all to say that. If you say that, I am a thriver. That is the vitality component of the life as spiritual principle concept. Now, humans really complicate things. This talk is probably evidence of that. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's just life, right? For, come on now. Um, but spiritual life involves creative expression and growth and extension of love. It is the divine presence expressing through all of us. And that divine presence expresses through all beings. Again, Charles Fillmore, one of Unity's founders, um, in a, his book, Christian Healing, he wrote, there is intelligence inherent in every form Animate and inanimate. It has been discovered that even rocks and all minerals have life. We should be speaking words of truth to everything, not only to mankind, but to the mineral, vegetable, and animal kingdoms. Nature offers so many examples for us to learn from, especially, especially to learn about this incredible power of life and the force that it has. This planet is such a magnificent playground. You know, it's been estimated, scientists have estimated, they think we probably have about 8.7 uh, million different species on the Earth. Humanity has only identified about 1.2 of them. We share this planet with an incredible, profound infusion of life. And it was mentioned earlier, we have the wonderful success story of the Fender's Blue Butterfly that exists only in the Willamette Valley in Oregon, was thought extinct, is now making a wonderful comeback. And I want to share a little bit more about that species' story. Now, the Fender's Blue Butterfly is very small, and in the caterpillar stage, it's a very tiny little green worm, and it's very vulnerable. It has created an ingenious relationship with several species of ants. And when the fender's butterfly caterpillar feels threatened, it will either secrete a hormone that smells a certain way, or excuse me, a pheromone that smells a certain way, or it will twist its body in a way that creates this certain high-pitched sound. It's a call for help. And when it does, the ants rally to it and they form a protective barrier around it. And in exchange, that worm secretes a little drop of sweet-tasting nectar that the ants eat. We are taught in our Western culture that it's all about survival of the fittest, that it's all about dog-eat-dog -dog and competition. What nature really shows, it's about reciprocity. It's about cooperation. Life is about symbiosis. I think it's fascinating with all the life forms on this planet to think about the fact that every single one of them 
is the center of their own universe. I remember the first time I went to Beijing. I'm a country girl. I mean, I'd been to New York and stuff, but Beijing is population at a whole new scale. And it was, it was mind-blowing, really. And one night, I was in a part of the city where it was just row upon row, stack upon stack of little tenement apartments with lights on. And every once in a while, you'd see a shadow, you know, something moving behind the lights. And it was just, it was amazing to me because in that moment, I realized every single being there, and there were a lot of them, their life was as important to them as mine is to me, right? I'm a beekeeper. My hive fascinates me. Bees are a supra-organism. They cannot live as individuals. They have specific roles. It takes all of those roles to make a colony thrive. And yet, within that, every single one of those tiny insects is the center of its own universe. We're all connected, and yet we are all unique, amazing expressions of divine creation, expressions of divine life. So what is the meaning? What is the purpose of this grand mystery called life? I, I, love, I love what, um, what was shared that the, for many of us, the meaning is to make meaning with our lives. For some of us, the meaning, our, our main meaning is to raise a beautiful family. For some of us, it is to master incredible talent that we are fortunate enough to be born with and work to develop. For some of us, it's to make a positive change in the world. I think that too is a very personal, personal answer to that question. I think it's also useful sometimes just to consider the sheer awe-inspiring, incredible awesomeness of being alive right now at this time in physical form, engaged in getting to know and grow ourselves as spiritual beings beyond bodies. And I want to show you, we're going to show you a little clip. We're going to be showing um, the full, this full movie from, that, is a, that you're going to see the trailer to. We're going to be showing that in a few weeks. But right now, please just take this in for just a couple minutes. We are all born... this tiny blink of an eye that we call life. To be alive in itself is just such a great gift. You have been given a chance in the cosmic lottery. You got a ticket. I'm grateful that I'm just here, just here at all. Ultimately, gratitude is a way of life. We don't know how we got here, we don't know why we're here, and we don't know where we're going. We bless our food, we bless our house, we bless our friendships. The journey is into oneself and into the meaning of being. We are slowly coming to realize we are all human and getting more in touch with our kinship it's about how to become a better human being, a better human being. I see gratitude as a route to a happy life. See, there are things that I need to do, and there are mountains I want to move, but I am right here, right now, and it's beautiful. Let the gratefulness overflow into blessing all around you. Part of the purpose of this life has to be celebrating the very fact that we have one, right? That's a spiritual practice in and of itself, as, as was pointed out earlier, celebration. So I say today, I invite us 
to say yes to fully living, fully expressing as our highest selves, to say yes to life and to say yes to thriving in it. Namaste. Namaste.